You're listening to the Daily Sales Tips Podcast, and I'm your host, Scott Ingram. Today's tip comes from Warwick Brown. Warwick is the founder of Account Manager Tips, host of the CAM Club, and on a mission to help organizations leverage the power of key account management to accelerate client retention and revenue. Here he is. Hi, heroes. It's Warwick Brown, founder of Account Manager Tips, host of the CAM Club, and on a mission to help busy key account managers get results. Now, look, it's that time of year again, quarterly boring review. And if you're not sure if your QBR is a bust, let's run through a few clues to help you decide. Does review time feel like torture? Do you find yourself preparing the review the day before or even the day it's due? I mean, you barely read it, but you think to yourself, look, I've done it a million times before. I can get through it blindfolded. You find your clients dodging requests to schedule the review. You either skip them or you find yourself presenting January's review in June. Your client constantly cancels or reschedules your review at short notice. Attendees drop off like flies as the review approaches or worse, you turn up and half the audience is just a no-show. And when you're there, people are on their laptops and their phones instead of paying attention to you and your presentation. So if any of that's happened to you, yeah, you've got a quarterly boring review on your hands. So look, let's fix this. Here are nine tips to turn your quarterly boring review into a quarterly brilliant review. Number one, don't call it a QBR. Use an alternative description that really inspires and better reflects the objectives of your meeting. Number two, keep it short. 30 minutes to review the past and 30 minutes to plan the future. No more than 15 slides and move any surplus data to an appendix. Number three, tell the QBR as a story. Find the narrative in the data. Tell a new, unexpected story of what is, what could be, and how you are the guide that will get your client to the promised land. Number four, the rule of three. Working memory holds up to nine items of data for 30 seconds. You'll improve recall by chunking your insights into groups of three short, powerful messages. Use pictures. Humans remember pictures far better than words, so ditch the bullet points and use a variety of charts, images, diagrams, and icons to communicate your ideas. Number six, stick to strategy, not tactics. Keep the QBR a high-level review on supply performance, return on investment, progress towards goals, potential roadblocks, and emerging opportunities. Schedule separate time for operational matters, or your QBR will dissolve into a problem-solving and complaint resolution mess. Number seven is to make it an event. You know, make sure that your client knows this QBR isn't just another meeting that could have been an email. Generate some buzz with a series of emails that showcase the objectives of the QBR and invite some A-list guests along. You know, those that have got authority to make sure that your review is strategic and where decisions get made. Number eight, send the QBR in advance. Send the review to participants before the presentation and ask for comments. If everyone is better prepared, then you can spend less time in the meeting on the past and more time planning for the future. And finally, number nine, read the room. Watch your audience's reactions for signs that you might be losing them. Use techniques like audience participation, pacing, volume, and humor to re-engage them. That's it, heroes. I hope this has been useful, and I look forward to you smashing your next quarterly brilliant review. For more about Warwick, including links to the Cam Club, where he's offering 14 days free for Daily Sales Tips listeners, just click over to dailysales.tips forward slash 934. Once you've done that, be sure to come back tomorrow for another great sales tip. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 